So this morning we're out here at Johnson Key off of Big Pine Key. It's a nice morning. There's the salt life over there. I'm playing with my new video, so this is kind of a test, but I'm going to share something kind of funny with you. So let's go down the steps here. We were over at the Salt Life last night. And so they were showing us these windows. And we have this little screen here. And we didn't even realize that ours did this. It's kind of embarrassing. Look at that. June, we're back for a stay on the boat and getting journey ready for some visitors over the summer. We're planning on some short and some long trips out of Port of the Islands over the next few months. You will probably see some Harley sightings in this video because we actually did not move her in with our daughter until August. So these are her last boat adventures aboard Journey. First up, Karen came to visit in what might have been one of the hottest June weeks on record in South Florida. We headed out to spend a night at Cape Romano and check out the blue water which I might add the summer storms had stirred up so we didn't find any real clear blue water this trip. But Cape Romano was a cool spot where we could see the dome houses. After spending some time on board and putting up our new sunshade, we ventured out on Shelby to check out the islands and get some video of Journey and the new sunshade floating in the water. does look good from the water, but we are biased. We got some great shots of the dome houses and watched a beautiful sunset, but maybe an even better sunrise the next morning. The heat drove us back to the dock. I mean, even the pelicans were not hunting. We did some exploring around the area and had some good seafood at Krabby Lady and took some fun pictures. Funny enough, we had to eat outside at this place, but they did have a big fan. We drove out into the Everglades and stopped to do some alligator viewing. All in all, it was a good time, despite the heat. Now to get some projects done before our next visitors, such as service the windlass. You always want that anchor to come up easy. July arrives and so do our good friends Bill and Angie. They flew in on a beautiful night and the sunset from the marina was something to see. We took the first of our many infamous selfies together. The night ended and we prepared to pull out early and head toward the Florida Keys. We started out early the next morning and were quickly joined by some dolphins who enjoyed our wake for a while. Although the seas started out rough in the morning, the seas and winds finally relented and the guys were able to grab some pompano for our evening appetizer. Harley really liked the fish and the wind loved her ears. The sunset was perfect near Big Pine Key and we were excited about getting out to Lou Key to snorkel the next day. Lou Key was clear and smooth which made for a great snorkeling day. We all enjoyed the snorkeling and seeing all the colorful fish and the healthy reef. It was my first time seeing a Goliath grouper. It's a big, big fish. Harley, though, did not find any of our snorkeling fun. She hates anything, especially people, in the water. We headed out about lunch for Marathon and enjoyed a nice ride up the coast and was able to anchor just before a storm hit the area. We cleaned up and headed into Castaways in time for happy hour to 
share tuna nachos with Bill and Angie. We highly recommend this appetizer. It's very yummy. After happy hour, we cruised out to Sombrero Reef on a sunset cruise and then back to anchor outside Boot Key Harbor for the night. The next morning, we tucked under the Seven Mile Bridge into the Gulf side of the Keys and headed up to Isla Mirada. We anchored in Lorelei Bay and headed in for happy hour at Lorelei. During the night, a serious storm came across Isla Mirada and the bay. Mm. Dee and I sat up in the cockpit to watch a lightning show like no other. Check out this picture I took from the anchor alarm the next morning. We were swinging around. The morning after the storm, we headed out to see if we could snorkel at Alligator Reef, but it was rolling out there. We did grab a mooring ball and just enjoy some swimming in the Atlantic Blue. This was Angie's idea, but we had a blast. Yes, everyone took a turn or two. We headed over toward Long Key to look for an anchorage for the night. Some dolphins joined us as we headed in and found a spot near Fiesta Key. This would be an easy start to cross back over toward Naples the next morning. We enjoyed a beautiful sunset and a quiet night. Crossing back to Naples was much better than when we set out a week ago, so it was selfie time. Everyone was able to take their turn captaining the boat, including Harley, her last full-time trip on Journey. We enjoyed sunning on the deck before making the final trek up the canal and back to Port of the Islands. Bill and Angie had a few more days, so we headed out to explore in Shelby. As we headed down the canal, looking for alligators or manatees, we finally spotted some manatees playing in the water. Oh, did you see how many yeah. scars? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess they could hit quite a bit. Yeah. Oh. That's why you have to go slow in there. Yeah. Oh, there he is. We finally made it out to Panther Key for some exploring on the beach and were able to catch this great photo of Shelby. Next, we made our way over to White Horse Key to explore some more. This was a great beach for walking and shell searching. We were also able to get some great photos on the beach, including more selfies before heading back to the dock. Harley's last full trip on the boat has officially come to a close. We'll miss peeking out the window to catch her sunning along the side of Journey, but we know her life will be easier and happier with more of a routine, which she likes. Of course, as I see this photo right now, I miss her so much. We're back on Journey by the end of August to catch up with our boat friends, Scott and Mary. They bought their endeavor months before us, and we met them through a Facebook group. They have been so gracious to show us their boat salt wife, and Scott has answered thousands of questions we've had once we purchased Journey. We made plans after Scott and Mary's retirement to head toward the Dry Tortugas near the end of August. Scott and Mary, who are traveling from north of Tampa, spent quite a few days on the water before they caught up with us at Tiger Key to prepare for the crossing. Once we got together to watch the sun go down, it was determined they wanted to slow down so we would not cross straight to the Dry Tortugas. We decided on Johnson Key near Big Pine Key as our next stop. We were able to grab some of my favorite pictures of Journey this night, just along the 10,000 Islands. Started out the next morning bright and early with coffee made and our first ever buddy boat trip. It was kind of different to have a partner while traveling, but we it was really great to know someone had your back. I think we enjoy just watching a boat like ours in the water. Scott and Dee got started fishing and soon mackerel was in both our boats and dinner was looking good for our future. Actually, Mary made fish tacos and it was so yummy. Yeah, oh. 
The sunset was once again something to see. We ate that night on their boat and checked out some differences on their boat from ours. And one was this window shade that looked similar to ours, but did not seem to function the same, or so we thought. It's right now. Hey guys, we want to show you something. Um, thanks for um, sharing your cute little shade with us that we were so jealous of because and what i'm about to show you is to never be spoken of again it's one of those scott okay so when we saw how yours operated all of a sudden we figured out hey hey ours works the same way look look well we just thought this was a class it actually unlocks and slides up. Hmm. Never to be spoken of again. Never. <laughs> we sent that video over to them the next morning, and we laughed about it the entire trip. We decided to head out to snorkel at Lou Key. Talk of Dorian was beginning for the Florida area, in particular Tampa, and Scott and Mary needed to decide whether to head back north sooner instead of crossing to the Dry Tortugas. This was not going to be the time for that trip. So we headed under the Bahia Honda Bridge and into the Atlantic. After we crossed under the bridge, we found ourselves in some rough Atlantic waters and decided to pull in at Little Torch Key to anchor, away from all the white caps that were pounding our boat. After anchoring at Little Torch, we headed over to Kiki Sandbar and found some more tuna nachos that are to die for. We visited Captain Jack at Picnic Island and prepared for the sun to go down. We gathered on Journey's front deck to watch the sun go down and once again we were not disappointed by the evening, the company, and the sunset. After Scott and Mary headed back to Saltwife, they grabbed this photo of Journey with her underwater lights. The next morning provided better conditions for snorkeling and we headed back out into the Atlantic and out to Luke Key. We each grabbed a morning ball and had to share our snorkeling stories later when we were together, but it was some great snorkeling. This is when Dee and I had our very close encounter with a reef shark. He came up over the reef right under us. Felt like we were almost face to face and he could have cared less about us. This picture is just an example of what we saw. Of course, we had no camera in hand. After snorkeling, we headed over to Marathon to have happy hour at Castaway and more tuna nachos. Afterwards, we headed around the Gulf side and anchored near Joe Rock for the night. And not only did we watch this thunderstorm build, but saw one of the most unique sunsets ever. We woke to water like glass all around us. Salt Wife was looking good in the water this morning. Scott got his drone out and grabbed some great shots of both Salt Wife and Journey. Notice again how smooth like glass the water is. After enjoying the morning, 
it was time to head back for us, as Dorian was not looking good for Florida. But Dee and I decided we were going to make one more stop at Shark River in the Everglades. We'd been talking about stopping here and felt this would be a good time for us to make this stop. Scott and Mary decided they would not be left out and decided to join us in the Everglades for one more night. So we pulled anchor and dropped the lines. This time one was mine. We pulled in early afternoon to the mouth of Shark River and got ready to explore. longer break the kayak out too. Come. Oh yeah, the kayak. This would be good for your paddle good boards. Fish. Fishing back in here. Some mangrove snapper. I hope you can remember your way out. I get lost in parking lots remember. I'm not sure if I had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> get kind of hot we might have to get in and swim yeah i don't think you get <laughs> first yeah we enjoyed exploring several canals off of shark river caught some great shots of the boats on the way back in. I know everyone is tired of hearing me talk about sunsets, but Dee and I love sunsets. And once again, this one was one to share. It was like the sky was on fire. The next morning we said our goodbyes and headed out. We plowed through, but mostly around some thunderstorms, and turned toward Port of the Islands. We watched Scott and Mary head on, knowing they had to move fast over the next few days to get home to beat Dorian. But as we all know now, Dorian decided against Florida. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away. Sail away. Although Dorian did not come across Naples or make any of the real expected landfalls and pass across Florida, it did not mean that we did not see some of her wrath or prepare for her. For about a week we prepared for her to make her way across Miami and Naples as one of her paths would have crossed journey. Thankfully she did not make this path, but here's some video we took as some of the storms from Dorian made their way toward us. Let me just end by saying, God bless the Abacos and the Bohemian people. Yeah.